In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the Arnold Sky Dome light to really quickly light up light your scenes and get quick results with very little effort on your part. Uh, they render quickly and you can get a wide variety of different types of images, looks and feels just by changing up uh, the base of the Sky Dome light using an HDRI image. We can do interiors, we can do exteriors, we can do just about anything you can think of. Let's check it out. So to set up my shot, I just, I'm just using a demo frog from ZBrush that is imported in here as an OBJ. Um, I just threw in a ground plane down here and for showing how that works on an interior space, I just have a box, which we currently can't see through, but just a box um, over all this so that we can have some kind of space and see how the uh, Sky Dome works with that. Before we actually set up the Sky Dome, we're going to need some HDRI images. This is where it's going to uh, source its color and light from, and this is why it's so quick as well. My favorite place to get HDRIs is from polyhaven.com. This site is awesome. Um, I have no affiliation with it whatsoever. They're just great. Um, so here, if you click on the HDRIs, they also have textures and models, by the way. Um, if you go to HDRIs, you can choose your type of source. So I want to do a studio based setting. It will show you all the studios. It gives you a sense of um, what the interior space is that you're using, including lights if there's lights in there. Um, and then you can just choose your resolution that you want to download from up to 16K for some of these guys, uh, your format as well as HDR, EXR. I'm going to be using EXR and then just download. Um, you can contribute to people. Um, there's different authors you can follow. Um, but a lot of the stuff is technically free, which is awesome. You do want to check the license though, and just make sure that the license is okay to use for your particular purpose. For this particular demo, actually let's grab this one too. I've grabbed a few different images. I grabbed this one, this uh, Moonlit Night. Um, this is probably the best approximation of what we're going to see, but you can also see what it looks like in reflections, which is also cool. Um, and then we have this uh, clear blue sky and a rainforest trail that's really soft look here. Uh, maybe I'll we'll actually put reflections on the eyes of the frog so we can see that happen too. Um, and then maybe we'll go ahead and download this interior one too. I'm just going to hit download. Uh, pulls it down. I'm good to go. Back in Maya, I've just applied some just base level uh, Arnold shaders, uh, Arnold surface shaders onto our objects here just to get some different sheen and so we can see how that's affected by the light. Um, we have uh, highly reflective eyes. We have a subtle... Um, uh, subtly specular skin for the frog with some uh, color tone and the ball and the rest of the environment here is going to be uh, full roughness so um, all diffuse and no specular or reflection um, or minimal anyway so uh, I also have my resolution set kind of at half HD just because I don't want to be rendering giant images until I'm sure I have what I like and then I can up res this to full res and, and check it out from there to add in the Arnold Sky Dome light, we just go to the Arnold tab and go to Lights and look for Sky Dome light. Click on it. You'll see it adds in a big uh, sphere all around your scene. This sphere is uh, maneuverable. You can rotate it. Mostly is what you're going to do, but you can do other things with it as well. Well, most of those don't matter. Just the rotation is going to be the big one. Um, right now we don't see anything on there because we don't have anything on the Sky Dome light. So I'm just going to click on it here or you can do it over here in the outliner. I'm going to press Control A um, and bring up the Sky Dome light attributes. Um, the attributes are going to be over here on the shapes. If it doesn't uh, show up, you can click over here. Um, the color channel is the main one that you want to play with in terms of getting uh, your, uh, your channel mapped. So I'm going to click on the mapping icon over here on the right hand side choose file and then under image name click on the folder and then drive to wherever my images are so in this case I have them on the desktop and here are the images that I've grabbed although I don't have the new one we grab put that in there as well oh I do have it right here um, again you'll notice these files are pretty big there's a lot of information packed in there so keep that in mind um, let's start off with an exterior one I'm going to do the uh, Let's see here, let's do the pure sky. So I'll click on the EXR file here, it will load it in. You'll actually see the file in the background now. Um, it doesn't matter if you're in uh, five mode, six mode, seven mode. Um, although seven mode will give you an approximation of the lighting, which is kind of cool, but it is just an approximation. You do need to render it to actually see it. Um, 
I'll keep it on for now. Um, so you can actually rotate the uh, background here and it will actually change the lighting scheme. So you can kind of see, you can rotate multiple directions too, but obviously it makes sense to keep your horizon level. But honestly, in the end, whatever looks good is what you should do. So let's do something like this with just the subtle highlights. And I'm gonna go over here and just do an IPR renderer just to give a basic sense of what this is gonna look like. So I'll click on this and it will generate a quick sense of what this looks like. Notice this render rates, renders really fast. It's just pulling all the data from an image. So it's much faster than a bunch of lights. And we have a very complex looking light scenario. We have tons of different colors. We have um, bounce light, key lights that's all baked into this one image. So it just makes things really, really fast. If you don't like the intensity of it, you can go over here and under your intensity slider, you can increase the intensity um, to get a brighter look, or you can decrease the intensity to dull it down. Whatever you think looks good, obviously, is something you can go with. I'm just gonna leave this at the, around the neutral point right here. Um, you'll notice it also pulls the image in the background. This is something you may or may not want. If you drop down here, under well, I missed it. under camera, you can pull this slider down and it will no longer render the background. So if you're looking to put in your own background or it's not necessary to render it, you're just looking for the lighting information, you can do that too. In terms of render quality, if you look in here, um, you'll see it's pretty uh, dodgy. Um, and that's just because of the sample quality. So for right now, just trying to get the, the look I want, I'd stick with this. But once I have something I like, you can go over here to samples and increase this. Uh, start out low to see what you get. Um, it will increase your rendering time, but of course the quality will improve too. And we're still looking at really fast renders. This frog, despite what it looks like, or maybe uh, even with what it looks like, is actually a pretty dense mesh. It's a, you know, it's on about 60,000 poly, something in that neighborhood. I think originally it was 600,000. Um, and you can see again how fast this is rendering. So increase your sample rate until you get what you like. And of course you can use your regular Arnold settings to uh, improve the quality as well. Let's take a quick look and see how this works in an interior space. I'm gonna go ahead and unhide my room, which pretty much makes everything invisible. <laughs> Um, so just a couple quick things here. Uh, part of this is because the camera is actually from the outside of the room. So that's a little problem. I can also make my room a little bit bigger here. There we go. Um, just so I can maintain the same shot. A few things right off the bat, you might come in here and notice that, um, uh, you're not seeing the inside of the shape. That could be just be because your, uh, two sided lighting is off. Um, or again, if you are in five or six mode, this now could make a difference where you're just seeing black. So just go to lighting, turn on two-sided lighting so you can see the interior, and then switch over to seven so you actually get your uh, approximate lighting, and you should be back in business. Um, a couple things, though. If I were to actually render this right now, you'll see that it's totally black. That's because the cube here is now casting shadows uh, from the dome. The dome is lighting inside itself, so anything inside the dome will be lit um, in this case, what will help is clicking on, well, two things actually. One will be um, a nice little trick here. If you press Control A on the cube itself, you can um, reverse which way it renders. So right now it's rendering the outside and the inside, but we can tell it to only turn off double-sided and it will only render one side. And I can then tell it to render the opposite side. So it's only rendering the interior of the dome, not the exterior, which means you can easily move around and see what's going on because uh, it will never render the exterior of the dome, which will definitely work well for our purposes. Again, though, you'll notice it's still black in the render, and this is because it's casting shadows as well. So I can turn off cast shadows, and now we can see the interior space working. This definitely slows down the render because we're looking at a lot more uh, bounced light. We're still getting the shadows off the frog, so there's that. Um, so that's still working, but I'd probably be playing with the intensity here just because now we have so much bounced light in this room. So um, popping this down, getting to a space that uh, feels more natural. The other settings you might want to play with here too um, on our skylight, you can play with your exposure settings here to uh, get different results too. Uh, to brighten or darken. Uh, this will have a different effect on the lighting than the intensity, so you can kind of play back and forth with those. 
Um, uh, in your render settings right here, um, going over to the Arnold tab, if you're still looking for more quality, you can play um, with these first two, I find gives the best result here, um, up in your uh, um, camera anti-aliasing right here to like three, four, play with this number. Obviously, as you increase these, um, also, I'm sorry, you're diffuse, but ultimately they will increase your rendering time uh, significantly as you keep adding more and more. So um, find the minimum you can get away with to make this look good, but again, fast, easy, great looking lighting. Hope this helps.